What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're back in the garage with the G80. Gonna throw on some rear reflector deletes um, from IND. Picked those up recently. Um, so there's a couple different options you can buy. I chose to go with the gloss slatted. They had the honeycomb pattern as well. Didn't like it as much. Um, you know, I'm trying to get the air ducts on the front of the vehicle to delete the honeycomb. So I figured if I'm gonna do that, Eventually, with the uh, carbon air ducts, then I'll probably might as well go ahead and match it with the gloss black slats in the rear. Um, so far, I've done one. If you guys take a look right here, pretty good quality. Um, I mean, it's basically an OEM match. Fits right up in there really nicely as compared to the original. Um, if you guys saw my previous video talking about the front IND paint match reflectors, um, the reason I did this is because with the car being blue, um, Interlagos blue metallic to be specific, but any color that's not red or orange or yellow or any citrus color, it just the red stands out a lot and uh, kind of drew my attention. Um, and especially the orange in the front. The orange reflectors were kind of an eyesore for a car that's blue, in my opinion. It may not matter to you, but the paint match in the front looks really good and then Gonna delete the reflectors in the rear and throw on the uh, gloss slatted black reflector deletes um, and that'll kind of clean up the rear. So I am gonna show you guys how to do it. A um, couple of tricks that I do that makes it a little bit easier if you have a couple simple uh, tools um, and then you'll be good to go. So I like to jack up the car. Um, you can remove the wheel um, but I have a couple tools here that make it more simple. So I just jack the car up just until the wheel is about to come off the ground and it gives me a little bit more gap back here. Um, my car is also not lowered yet, so it kind of helps with it not being uh, too close. But essentially what we're going to do is 110 mil right there, 110 mil right there, and those are just holding on the fender liner. We're gonna remove those, and that's gonna give us access to a T20 Torx right back here, which is holding on the top of the fender. So three bolts in there. Um, and then down under, what you're gonna see is, so you're gonna have one, two, three. And those three 10 millimeter bolts are gonna remove the bottom part of the fender um, and allow it to separate. Then what we're gonna do is simply take the rear of the bumper, pull it away. There's just three or four clips that hold it up along here. Pull those away, and then we'll get access to the back of the fender. So let's get to it. So once again, these are two 10 millimeter bolts. And I just have a quarter inch ratchet and a 10 mil stubby. Okay, so once these two 10 mil fender bolts are removed, I'm just gonna run my hand up under the liner. And then this uh, little flap, which goes behind the bumper, I'm gonna pull it out, work my hand up, and that's gonna allow me to see. So what I've got is just a 11 inch extension. It's got a quarter inch adapter for my impact and then a quarter inch on the other end and all I'm doing is instead of having a ratchet because a ratchet is harder to fit up in here I'm just taking the T20 bit dropping it into here and this has flex so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run this up hit the uh, hit the head of the bolt I can pull this out attach it into my drill run the drill and the drill is just gonna power it out. That's the best way that I found to do it. So 
So now, once these two fender well bolts are removed and the one holding the top side of the bumper and then the three on the bottom, it's just clips. I think there's four clips that run up here. You can take the inside of the bumper and give it a pull. And then grab right here and do another pull. And then this whole thing comes disconnected. Now the bottom, I kind of give it a tug too. And that's pretty much all you need. I may do one more. There's one clip up here that I, I think last time, yeah, there it goes. That clip I popped off and made it easier to get a better reach back there. So let me see if I can get a visual for you guys. If you look right there is the first clip. There's the second clip. Third clip is this black plastic piece right there. So one, two, three. And I'll show you on the new one what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. And it just sits in, it actually clips in from the rear. So this is the inside view, actually like this. That's the inside view of what you're seeing. So all we're gonna do from the inside is pinch it like this and then push it out. Now you can't take your hand and run it back there. Last time I found it was a little bit difficult. So I've got an extension uh, pair of pliers. I think it's 10 or 11 inch. And it's got a, a dual mechanism here so I can actually get full opening with barely, you know, basically I can stay as thin as possible. So I work one and then try to go to the second one, push it out. Sometimes you have to do them all three like twice. And then once you get it where you want it, pull that out and it should pop right out like so. Now we're gonna take the new one, make sure it's oriented correctly. It can only go in one way, so you really can't mess it up. And then these clips, one, two, three, are just gonna press in. They're a little tight. And trust me, you'll hear it click in. It kind of feels like it's getting pressure, it gets tight, but then it's a pretty loud click. There it goes. So the first one's good, second one's good, third one is good. They're all seated and flush. So now we're going in reverse order to put it back in. And uh, first things first, you wanna make sure this is seated. So grab from the bottom and make sure the bottom, the bumper piece right here, kind of pull it back towards the front. Like that. I'm basically just picking it up and making sure it drops down underneath here and sits here. Cause that one clip right here, we wanna make sure it's dropped underneath the tail light. And then so the rest of the clips can run down. So once you have the bumper lined up back right here, before you bolt anything down, make sure that this is lined back up correctly on the bottom as well. You may have to maneuver it, pull it around like this and see how it clicked in place. These all have to line up. If these aren't lined up properly and you torque the other ones down, then you're gonna have a problem. So once the bumper is lined back up, the bottom piece is lined back up, all you're gonna do is make sure it's lined up like this and press it in. Like so. Make sure it's clean, everything's flush right there. Gap looks good, and that's good. So once that is clipped into place, the bottom is lined up. I'm gonna run this screw, the T20, back up to secure the bumper first. These three back down here, and then those two on the fender liner last, because you also wanna make sure this flap goes inside the bumper right there. <laughs> 